if all will go well, I will feel like I'm ready to potentially go into space one day if all will go according to plan. There will be a lot of challenges that we will encounter during the missions. I've never been isolated before. There's only going to be four of us, and, and eight months really is a long time. Some of the harder challenges are going to be knowing that that's the last time that I'm going to have you know, fresh air on my face or the sun on my skin or, or even just to, just to feel rain. And uh, it's going to be quite confronting, but you know, it, it's real and, and that's, that's what's going to help us and myself you know, understand if, if I have the necessary skills and strategies that we're going to need for the first human space explorers on Mars. I can hear you over. HIC stands for the Hawaii Space Exploration Analog and Simulation, and we conduct long duration simulated space exploration missions up on Mauna Loa here in Hawaii. Any space mission is a system of systems. So you've got the rocket, you've got the habitat, you've got all of the systems that keep people alive, and you have the people. Um, people are part of that system. And if the humans go wrong, that's just as bad as if the rocket blows up. So we need to make sure that all parts of the space exploration system work well uh, for the mission to succeed. In the research community, we describe this kind of environment as an ice environment, isolated, confined, and extreme. And it is that. Uh, but I think this crew is gonna have a good time. They, they seem to be bonding really well, they laugh a lot, uh, and I think that's gonna serve them well over the eight months. Turn 25 on Mars, right? <laughs> <laughs> These missions are really unusual. Um, at some level, I could describe it like uh, you know being on a family vacation for eight months with the same group of people, right? Uh, where you know you feel a lot of affection for each other, but you also drive each other nuts. So you come back in, you have to repressurize. It takes five minutes, and that whole area is kind of blocked off during the during the EVA. Yeah. This research study that we're doing right now is all about crew composition. How do you choose the individuals who fit together to make a great team? So we're studying different ways of doing that. <laughs> okay. Maybe say something, just say, see if it's not too loud. You want to have a toolkit. You know, you wouldn't fill the toolkit uh, full of hammers, even if they were the best hammers in the universe. You need to have different personalities, different skill sets, different approaches to problem solving, and you want all of those to mesh together into a very highly functioning whole. Can you hear me okay? Or? Much, okay, and, and then do you I feel sealed off? It's actually it's a childhood dream for me to become an astronaut, and I've been fighting my way towards this goal since I was eight years old. The main thing for me is I genuinely feel the the future for the human race is, is space exploration, is uh, interplanetary travel, and I think that the missions like this and research like this can really help us perform better. So what we're not doing is sort of a big brother, all cameras all the time throughout the mission. Instead, our focus is on passive monitoring. Uh, so for example, uh, the crew wear these sociometric badges. Uh, so what they do is they uh, detect the various positions of the crew and the volume of their voice. So you might imagine if two people are standing nose to nose and their volume is really high, they might be having a fight. Oh, you cannot. <laughs> Hi, I love you, Kyla. I'm now quite nervous and excited at the same time. Um, 
There are a lot of things that uh, will be challenging throughout the eight months, but I'm quite excited about those challenges because I will be able to learn from those things. Like, oh, oh no. Wait, wait, wait. Hmm? What is Control Z here? <laughs> there we go, see? It's really important to us to get useful data from these crews. You don't want to stick someone in a can for eight months and not get useful data from them. So uh, that's why we spend this time training the crew. That's uh, why we put so much effort into these missions. We really want to give NASA the answers it needs to go ahead with uh, real space missions. The isolation involved with this kind of a mission and experience is, is really quite dramatic and a different change from my normal everyday life. For example, while we're in here on mission, we can only have eight minutes, eight minutes of showering per week. When you leave your life behind, you have to think about what to do with your passwords and with your bank card and tax and things like that. But also with dealing with the kind of the stressors and the tension that can arise when you are completely isolated, which is something that is obviously quite new to me. I don't feel like giving away eight months of my life to further our knowledge in science is really, it's not a great sacrifice for me. Once the door will close, it'll be a very different situation when you realize, oh, I'm only going to be here with three other people and I won't be able to communicate with the outside world like I'm used to. Oh, thank you. You're going to be brilliant. You're going to be awesome. The only way to know whether or not we're ready to go on is to try. We're ready technologically. We have explored not all of our planet, but an awful lot of it, and it's time, it's time to go. Fire Department, what is the address or location of your emergency? We are at the High Seas Habitat on the side of Mauna Loa. Okay, and uh, do you know how we access that? Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.